When I hear Ben Gvir and Netanyahu and whoever else talking about, well, this is democracy. Mm -hmm. It's majority rule. Mm. And that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but is it the kind of democracy where that Ben Franklin warned against? Yeah. Where it's two wolves and a sheep? Yeah. Or is it the democracy that you ha that Israel says it wants to have, like in the United States, which is a representative democracy and a republic, and has that constitution in place in order to preserve the rights of the minority? Yeah. I think it's pretty clear, actually, to everyone, including coalition members, that a liberal democracy, liberal democracy, which is what we enjoy in the United States, which is what we've enjoyed in Israel up to this point, requires checks and balances. Um, mm -hmm. Israel has a very idiosyncratic system in that we really only have two branches of government because our Knesset, which is the legislature, um, from the Knesset emanates the government itself, which right. is the collection of ministers who kind of lead the ministries and lead Israel in its direction. And to a degree, it's the same in the States. Yes and no. It depends on who's in power, right? We have a bicameral legislature, right. and each of those um, parts, each of those houses can have a different party uh, in majority, and then you have the executive, and so you might have a situation where two or you know two against one or three all line up with with the same party's control, and then more than that, you actually elect your politicians directly on the national level in the United States, whereas in Israel you're only voting for a party. So basically, you have the you know ten or eleven or so party heads are the only accountable politicians in the Knesset, and all the MKs are basically accountable to those party heads with the exception of uh, Likud members, because they have some sort of quasi-democratic process, and then labor and religious Zionism also open to that. But really, you have most of the MKs in this government are really just accountable to their party head, right? And that's, that's your Lapid's party, that's Benny Gantz's party on opposition, those two parties. That's definitely UTJ and Shas, where their rabbis also choose them. And so you have this weird system where you've only really elected maybe 11 people. And the mm. idea that this system, you know, that the vote, the voter who, by this way, by the way, this election only came down to like 30,000 to 40,000 votes because the way that the weird thing called the electoral threshold works and the parties who came really close to making it into Knesset but didn't, had the parties that came close but didn't make it into Knesset, I mean, the left wing parties in this independent uh, Arab Palestinian nationalist party, we would have gone to it, another election. We would have gone to another election. So this idea that the voter said they want this is kind of ridiculous to me. In addition, because the only party that gave voters a judicial reform platform before the election was religious Zionism. Likud basically ignored it. Um, the Haredi parties you know, had their, their own messaging, but this was not clear to most voters that this would be the, the exclusive thrust of this government.